Charles Nordine podcast. Let's just talk about it. Heat it up, let's make it hot with my crew. That's all I got. People love us more than haters trying to roll up on the lot. And when we fly through the air, I feel like I can't miss a shot. Pull up. Got the greatness to get. Excellent, excellent. Okay. All right, we're live. We're here. What's up, guys? Yeah. yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> In France. So, um, let's just talk about it. So, I, I figure the best way to do this is all big fans of you guys. We're big fans of you too, Charles. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to know, just let's just start from the beginning. You know, I think it's kind of a niche thing. You know, I think we all have a love for food. We all have a love for tabletop. Obviously, love for filmmaking and commercials. But, uh... And a love for toys. And toys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, clearly. But, um, you know, I'd love... I mean, I'll start with you, Steve. Like, sure. How'd you get into this? Uh, by mistake? No. Um, <laughs> so let's give. I'll give you the short, short, semi-short version. Um, so I'm from Miami originally. Uh, my parents are Cuban, so I'm first generation. Um, my dad's an engineer. My brother's an engineer. My uncle's an engineer. Grandfather was an engineer. Everybody was an engineer. But I was like, oh, I like taking pictures. Pictures is fun. So in like high school, I picked up a camera, started shooting film, and loved still photos, and that was great. Um, I graduated high school. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I went to state school for engineering and then because like that's what everybody else did so that's what i would do too um and i was pretty much just partying on south beach every day at that time but um then i, I kind of like started taking pictures more and more and i actually got a full-time job at a senior portrait yearbook studio which was like the worst <laughs> job i've ever had in my life um but <laughs> so i just started doing that just because it was a job and i was getting paid to take photos which i thought was kind of cool you know like how how bad is that and then, um, you know, I kind of went on and on and eventually I was like, okay, this is something I think I really want to do. Uh, so I found out about RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York. And um, I applied to transfer in and I transferred in uh, and basically was there for two years. And I did like my third and fourth year of my four year degree because okay. I transferred all my Florida credits in. Um, and that's where I really fell in love with photography and like commercial photography specifically like i was like i'm gonna be a still life photographer no i'm gonna be a fashion photographer like i just tried everything i yeah. was just i think that was the best part of it it was just like oh you want to do food there's a well there's a this teacher teaches a food class so, oh you want to do you know documentary filmmaking like oh there's this guy you know so it's just kind of a little you, bit of everything you, you wanted to do film image making image of some sort of, yes yeah. yes okay yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I graduated and I went to, and everyone was like, oh yeah, you moved to New York City, that's what you do. And you just felt photo assist. So I moved to New York City, I called a bunch of alumni from RIT. I'm like, hey, I'm fresh here, I wanna work, you know, whatever. Um, and people started hiring me, which is cool, you know, which is great. And, you know, once you're on set, you really kind of get your eyes really open did, to like, oh, that's what this is about. Did you feel, did you, uh, just jump in, did you feel like you had to, I mean, I get the feeling just from knowing you, from the time of knowing you, like, you know, there's a persistence, I think, that we all have. You know, you guys chime in on, on any of this stuff. Like, like, did you, were you persistent with reaching out to the alumni, trying to get jobs? Like, so like, just a little side talk, but talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I no, I, I think it's it's an everyday persistence, too. It's just like, every day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to keep trying to do this. And I think that's what I still do today. You know, it's like, I think that's yeah. the most important thing is just like, there's... It's not like a big effort for a week or two or a month. It's like you just got to keep going a little bit every single day. Because you had nothing at that point. No, That's nothing. No, I had enough yeah. money for like another month of rent in Brooklyn. And like that was it. Like I was like, I'm going to make this happen. So can you please pay me the day of the shoot if you can? Thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just started photo assisting. Um, this is all still film, like medium format and four by five camera stills stuff. Um, and then pretty quickly... I, the digital thing was starting to happen and I had taken some classes at RIT about digital stuff. They were like cutting edge on that stuff. So I, I be, quickly became like one of the first digital techs in New York City. I hooked up with some people that had digital capture companies. I was like, okay, I would send the digital tech out with the stuff. Um, I worked on like, you know, Stephen Mizell shoots. I actually got to show Richard Avedon how digital worked, which was like the That's coolest awesome. thing ever. Like nice. I just got like these really so interesting experiences because there's so few people that knew how to do it. And I, once again, I like, if I do something, I like try to learn everything I can about it. I play with it until I figure it out. You know, yeah. that's the, kind of the engineer side yeah, in yeah. me a little bit. Um, and it was great. And I was also, I could communicate in a creative way and a technical way. And that that's what was a very unique thing is a lot of the digital techs of the day, like were either just really computer heads and they're like, well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, about. The highlights are, you know, not looking right or what, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, bridge that gap of that, those two worlds yeah. kind of like starting to collide. 
Yeah. So then to fast forward a little bit, then I started shooting for magazines, like mostly, actually, I wanted to be a travel photographer when I moved to New York City. I like, oh, I get to go wow. places and travel and shoot and take pictures. And so I started doing it. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, this, this is exhausting. Yeah, and right. like, they pay yeah. you 500 bucks a day or whatever it is. So, um, so I kind of started building a portfolio around travel. But then uh, somebody was like, hey, you know, can you shoot just food for us? And I was like, Okay, I could just shoot the food for you. It's like Savure magazine. I don't know if they're, I think they're still around. Um, and I just started shooting the food. And then they're like, oh, can you shoot the chef too? And then that kind of led me down this path of food as far as my concentration because it was just natural to me. I was like, oh, if I do this and this and the light like that, oh, it looks beautiful. And people yeah, are like, yeah. wow, you're like, that's natural to you, you know? Um, I think there's definitely something about playing to your strengths. So you you know, kind of that, just landed in it. It just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I knew I wanted to do something, but like food just kind of called me and kind of, did you feel way. anything though when you started shooting it? Like, I mean, besides just coming natural to you, did you start to kind of see it in a different way? Oh, for sure, for sure. And just like, oh, okay, I should be making decisions about everything in the frame. You know, like, oh, it's not just about the food, but the plate, the light, the, you know, the arrangement. Oh, what if we try this, you know? And I think the challenge too when you're young is also to like fight for what you think is the best shot. Because a lot of times you're dealing with these, you know, creative directors or art directors or, you know, that are like, oh, no, no, we do it like this. And it's just like, no, but did you try it like this, you know? And, and I think that- It's so true, if you don't fight for those moments, I mean, obviously there's a give and take with yeah. that stuff, but yeah. like the amount of times you go like, I'm yeah. sure you guys have this, yeah. and you're just like, oh man, I should have said something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I, that's an important lesson right. to learn early on though, right. cause I mean, like as an artist, like your choice is so important. You know, yeah. like you have to like make a choice. Yes. And even if everybody shoots it down, like you gotta make that initial choice. You gotta fight the fight, yeah. It just doesn't happen, and right. then you're just, you know, laying in your bed, just sleeping, dreaming at night, going like, fuck, that would've been so amazing. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. And yeah. I think it's a, a balance of like, once the client's like, we love the shot, it's great, and if you're behind schedule, it's not the time to do that, oh, I think. Right. But, exactly. you know, but I think if you have the ability to even Did show that just wink at me? first. Just joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> if you have the ability to try to look at that first, yeah. You know, even sometimes is a good way to kind of get it set. And they're like, oh, my God, I love that. Done. Yeah. And you it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of what they pay you to do, yeah, too, right. you know, really is to yeah. kind of, you know, take their idea and take it further. Right. You know, and kind yeah. of show yeah. them like, you know, what, you know, any of us, I'm sure. You because this is such a niche job that, you know, like they don't know what's possible. You know, we, we, we've played with the toys. We've tested out stuff. We've yeah. played with the lenses. And then we right. go like, OK, you want the shot. What about if we put the camera like we just cut something open and put the camera inside, like the lens inside or whatever. And then yeah. they go like, oh, you, you can actually do that. Like, yeah. And then like they're a little bit scared at the beginning. They're like, but how? And then you show it to them and you just do a quick test, send it to them. And they go like, oh, this is amazing. Right. So, yeah, that's kind of our job to like explore the possibilities. Right. Right. Um, Which is something just, you don't get in yeah. CGI. No. You know, like that no, as an no, example, no. right? Like you you kind of just decide on what you want to do and you do that thing and that's kind exactly. of what, what you yeah. do. You no, know. it's like, it's like when you, you just shot, um, I was talking with um, Winnie who shot it with you and he was talking about how you guys kind of use the sun to light like the actual like coke cool. and everything. And, you know, it was cool, but it's like, those are things where it's like, you know, unless you, uh, you know, open up your, like your own space to play and try these right. things, you right. know, you won't, you won't ever achieve those looks because you come in with all these preconceived notions sometimes right. of like a job and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But like CG's that on crack. Right. Yeah, know, exactly. Basically. Yeah. But it was like beautiful, you right. know, and it, I was like, oh man, like you use kind of balance and like light. You know, that. Like CG, like you can do anything. It's kind of like, like, I don't know, like make, making music. Like nowadays there's so many filters, plugins, whatever you could like do anything and CG gives you that. And I, I think what's really cool about what we do is kind of like you have an idea and then you go like, how the hell am I gonna make this possible? So you start figuring it out, exploring and finding the things. And I think there's nothing cooler than when people tell you that's all practical on camera and you go like, yeah. And people go like, how? And you're like, well. Or they <laughs> say, why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes we don't know, you know, sometimes you put the, you know, frame, I've had times where I'm gonna shoot things that have a little more like, you know, B-roll or people in it and, you know, I'll just, you know, DP will put the camera down right. and I'll see it on the monitor and I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, that's awesome. Yeah, like, don't, yeah. don't touch uh -huh, it, you uh -huh. know, because there's something about just like placing it naturally right. that like gives you something better than, right. you know, it's stupid, might be something you use for a second, but you yeah. know it when you see it, yes, you know, exactly. And if, and if you don't give yourself that space and actually take those chances, right. it's like, you, you, you just, yeah. Or you, you blow a breaker and the pill light turns off and you're like, oh man, the light's so much better. Just What'd like that. Do? Like, what yeah, did you do? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> leave, leave that. And the client's just like, oh my God, that looks so good. And you're just like, great, let's, let's go that way. Let's, let's do it. You know, and I think it is funny because, like, if there's no time to explore, like, you, 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 you know you're going to do a good job. Yeah. The question is, can it become great? 
And yeah, I yeah. think some of that is having that room to explore and not just because, you know, we've done a lot of shoots. We know what we're doing. So we'll do a good thing. Yeah. But like with that little time to explore, I think that's where you really could make something even more magical. And I think, huge. Yeah. you know, and I think clients don't realize that sometimes where it's just like, oh, no, we got to get 12 shots or whatever. You know, it's just like, no, but we want to do something great for you. Like, can we find a balance between the yeah. two things? And we're constantly and, fighting. And it's that. such a collaboration, though, too. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, it's like even just collaborating with a breaker going out, you know, like it just <laughs> something happens and it, it changes it. And you have all these different voices and. That was something somebody that that I uh, did some work with when I was younger. Um, this really good director, this guy Marco Brambi, did like um, um, I think it was Demolition Man and like uh -huh. Excess Baggage. But he told me I was like young and I was being a little bit like egotistical about like this thing I shot and I like wanted it in there and like it just didn't wasn't really serving this like little film that we did. But also there were like some comments that I got and he, and he just told me he was like, man, like it doesn't matter where the comment comes from. He's like, at the end of the day, you're the director, like your name's on the piece. Right. Or like, who right. gives a fuck about your ego? Yes, yes. And he's like, yes, dude, yes. if the crafty person has a good comment, like, you're all there to collaborate. Right. So. Right. Yes, just, exactly. You know, use yeah. it. Like, what's yeah. the point? Like, you're, you're not walking out of there and they're not going to go, oh, like, you know, get the, the PA said that, <laughs> like, get them over, you know, uh -huh. or get them over, put their name on. And so, right. for me, I, I, that's like when I, I really, really so many eyes, and I think is also important because like, there's like, you know, you're, sometimes you're looking at a shot and you're, you're just seeing, like, you're l looking for the, like, if it's in focus. You know, so you might like miss a bunch of stuff, but you, you're just looking for the focus. And someone else comes in and goes like, oh, well, the tomato in the back was kind of blah, blah, blah. We were like, oh, yeah, thank you for telling me. Yeah. So you want to give like a, I, I feel sometimes I, I try to give like a safe space for people to comment on. Because, yeah. you know, like you don't want to be in the edit and go like, oh, man, the tomato in the back was <laughs> right. shit. Right. And uh, <laughs> why didn't anybody tell me? Yeah. And then you go like, well, people were afraid to tell you because you're, you know, the director. So I, I, I do want, you know, to create that safe space right. people go like shouldn't be this like, like this right. and then you go like, oh no dude thank you and whoever it is you know yeah, yeah. no it's, to filter the comments it's right? amazing like, how yeah. many times you miss things too oh, i mean just yeah. you know you have a gazillion freaking things on your your plate you know and if you're like not Haley, it's like you know you can only manage so many things in your brain you right. know right but like you miss things you know and that's that was the other thing too i realized i was like oh like you know it was a uh, uh, David Mamet, the playwright, had this one great mm -hmm. line. He said, invent nothing, deny nothing. It was like an actor thing. Uh -huh. But I always loved that because it was kind of like, look, you know, like you don't want to be making shit up all right. the time. But right. also if something yeah. happens, you know, you right. got you got to go with it. Yeah. It's more of an actor thing. Right. Actors are crazy. You know? so yeah. like, <laughs> if it's happening, you just have, you know, you have to flow. Right? Sure. It's improv. Yeah. yeah. But um, yes. I also, that yes, and. to film as well. <laughs> and food especially because right. food just like sometimes... Right. In a tabletop people world, it's like, oh, I can control it and actors are crazy. But to me, sometimes, like, actors are, like, sometimes easier because I can be like, I need you to do this. I'm going to be perfect. And sometimes food, you know when you're trying to get a shot right. or you know your idea, it's, you start to realize in practice it's not going to work that well. <laughs> and you're just like, please do this. And uh -huh. the food is like, no, nope, this is how I uh -huh. fall every uh -huh. single time. You know? Also, like, uh, when you, like, you do a test and everything is perfect, and you go like, okay, we got this. Like, this shot is going to be like 20 minutes tomorrow. <laughs> and then you have all the paramet like, like, uh, parameters written down. And you say, okay, I use this lens. I use this light. I put this here. You, like, you know, replicate <laughs> everything and it, it doesn't happen. And you go where did we go wrong right and it could right. be something dumb like oh the iso was different sure whatever sure. it is right. and you're right. kind of like freaking out because story like, was yesterday was perfect <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah we just did this thing i just did this 180 shot around this cup and in the studio we had it on like a pedestal so i mm -hmm. can kind of start here and do a full 180 right but then on the actual location was this edge and so That's and the then point. you know the with the reach of the arm and the track and everything and a few things happen so I, I could I wasn't a full 180. So the shot still works. There's a seamless cut in, in between it that you don't notice at all. Sure. But um, just seeing it in practice is like, oh wow, that 180 is like yeah. again the shot is cool, but the 180 is what really makes it go like, whoa. whoa. And right. so like you know I'm you know talking like 10 degrees, you know off of that 180, so like 170 or something. But that little bit takes that like kind of centripetal force of what like the robot arm right. would do and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. was like. 
or I was just like, fuck, man, like, <laughs> I just I nailed that in literally like 15 minutes right. in the studio right. with that. No problem at no. all. And then you just get on Little details. A couple Little things, details. You know, like, okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you, that's the beauty of it. You improvise, you know. You, right, right, right. You stay focused, you know. And you also, like, like, we had the shot, at, like, we tested with cold water and it looked beautiful. Like, we did it, boom, uh -huh. and then you go to the shoot, and now you do it with hot water, yeah. and it just changes mm -hmm. completely. Yeah. And you're like, uh, yeah. Yeah. What? All the you details. Think about checking it with the proper temperature. <laughs> every yeah, every detail changes everything, mm -hmm. right? But like happy accidents, right? Sometimes yeah. you get this that beautiful, well. beautiful yeah. shots because things change without reason, <laughs> but then you get this amazing shot because that's what it is. Yeah. So then the thing explodes and you go like, why? How? But you just go with, with run with it. And then like the client looks at you, you're like, yeah, that's exactly how we. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of my, some of my best shot comes out of like something unplanned right. and then it just happens. And that's the beauty of photography, beauty of what we do is like mm -hmm. being spontaneous and also trust everybody that you work around you and they bring everything right. to the table and then it just magic happens. Yeah, right. That's how it happens. It, you like you can't plan hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. you have to be totally op going in open-minded, you know, and then you can't be too buckled down. You know, that's you got anything in particular, a shot. Uh, well, I'll get, I'll get back to you. Let me think about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's just, it's funny, you know, I mean, I kind of like build off of that. I want to kind of, I'm going to kind of track back on everybody's like story. Sure. Sure. Um, but like kind of build off of that is like, that is the medium, you know? Like, I think that always gets so lost in translation right. when you were talking about like the AI stuff, like <laughs> it's fascinating. I love this stuff, but like the part that should terrify everybody is like, you know, everything we do on earth as humans is for humanity. Right. Right. So I, I it's like when a kid draws something, yeah, if it's your kid, it's beautiful, but sometimes I'll <laughs> see anybody's kid stuff and you go like, man, that's like the most honest piece of artwork uh -huh. I've ever seen, you know, cause it's like, they're just just flat out doing they might not have you know the hand they're not like da vinci where they drew a circle a million times they right. can do it perfectly but like there's something honest about that and that's how i sometimes feel about like digital art you know um mm. but you know as times as digital arts like progressed a bit too with the cameras and the technology like we were talking about ak the other day you yeah. know, with the red like you know you are getting closer to like 35 but you'll never have like what celluloid has where it's just a chemical exposure that sure whatever light was there permeated into those, yeah. those shadows yeah. and, and highlights. And so I, I just always think there's like a side of that. Cause like exactly like what you, I mean, you just said, Shankin about um, these happy accidents. I mean, like, the whole point of like all this technology is to not have happy accidents, <laughs> you know? Right. And I think some things have to be preserved that way sure. because it's just, you take the fun out of it. Right. You know? That's why I like, I, I was talking with him yesterday that I love doing like at least a couple of uh, specs a year where it can like fully play because, um, you know, you have a budget, you have a timing, like as a director. And I, I like when I, when I talk to other directors, I like talking about like, what do you think is your main responsibility on set? And like, I do think that it's like, um, one of my responsibilities to be prepared enough to like, s you know, s stay on time mm -hmm. and not go bananas and, uh, do something that the client, you know, will, you know, like at the end. So yeah, it's like, it's your working out. Right. And it's like, and I, seriously, as a director, I mean, I feel that way because sometimes when you're working, you're working, you're working. It's true. It's like, I mean, you are hired to do a job. Right. It's not like your own ego fest, you know, like, so you have to find that fine line between like what they hired you to do, but then deliver for, you know, not only like the agency, but also like the actual client. And right. then, you know, however many other thousands of people that like work at that place, you know, right. so there is a big responsibility, but yeah, it's true. It's like, taking the time to shoot your own stuff like do some specs it's like it is your your workout mm -hmm. you know that's yeah. one thing you know that i see you creative just close creative to see, muscle I see, yeah i see you like doing stuff you in the studio yeah. you right. know and i I, right. I love that i mean that's half the reason like, we're <laughs> talking because i was like i like what you're doing is, is 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 what most people do and are should be doing and a lot of people i think they just get to a point and it's like it's about the job. It's about right. work. They stop playing. Yeah. They stop, they, they, they stop the following the curiosity. The exactly. They're like, it's just a job. We're going to get through those 10 shots. The client will be happy and great. Yeah, I mean, get my check in. And Here we go. go have my wine. With yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah. everybody likes to do that. But like, what's the, you know, it's like back when you're yeah. like a digital right. tech and you're yeah. just going like, we got a month left. Yeah. You know, yeah. fuck, I'm out of here. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're like, I'll just show up. I'll do whatever, you know, it like, yeah. doesn't matter. And, and yeah. So, oh yeah. I painted 
cabinets at the photographer's studio. I would do whatever. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I could build stuff, job. too. Yeah. I did some construction yeah. stuff. You know, I could take down walls. Yeah. yeah. It's like, whatever, you're going to pay me? Great. Yeah. Uh, like, I just want to stay. To say, I just yeah. want to stay here and, and give this a chance and keep yeah. going, you know. And I think, I mean, honestly, that story has happened throughout my career when I'm switching from video to like, stills to video, too. It was just yeah. like, oh, wait, well, I'm nobody in the video world. Like, I'm like, I'll do whatever job you want to shoot. Pay me to do video stuff. Let me play around. And yeah. I mean, I think that's where some of the clients were just like, oh, my God, this stuff is amazing, yeah. you know, because I was willing to just explore the curiosity. Yeah. And like, like, there was no not many check boxes I had to check off. It was just like this thing, you know, that's it. Let's, yeah. let me do that thing for a day and see what I could do with that thing. And, so you, you get know. good at yeah. it. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. like, yeah. you know, no, I mean, it, 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 that's literally the point, you know, it's just <laughs> like, if you don't do it, you'll, that it'll never happen, right. you know? So right. it's like, yeah, doing this, you know, a couple specs a year, just shooting. It's like, that's what gets your muscle strong. Yeah. And then for me, it's what makes me fall back in love with what we oh, do yeah. right. because yeah. it's so easy to get involved Ooh. with the money. It's so easy to do like some shitty jobs for money, you know, which is fine. Right. Everybody's got to do it. But there's times where you're like, who am I? Right. What am I doing? You know, do I even have half a nut in my brain <laughs> to do anything creative? Right. Right. Why so, am I doing this still? Why, why yeah. do I wake up today and still want to do this? Yeah, because yeah. it is a form of, of, of sadomasochism. <laughs> you know, it is torture. It is you know, torture. It's, you know, especially, especially when doing a spec and you're like, like you're out there and you're like, like, cause you, you told me that you were shooting until like what, 4 a.m. in the morning. And... Four, but Haley, Haley didn't get home until eight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, but we did shoot till we shot till four, and yeah, that's what I was saying. We just we did and you ask all you have to ask all these people like like if you're down to help you out yeah. and this is going to be cool and you yeah, know, like you show them your idea and you have to get people excited oh, yeah. and then and then you know the hours go pa go past and then you feel really guilty because you're making everyone stand here. We got a little grumpy. Right. Yeah. yeah, but it's like but it is like summer camp and that's also you know why like you know like Haley and I, you know that's like your partner when you do it when you work with a producer. It's like you know everybody you know needs it like i'm like energizer and you you turn me on yeah. and i just go till i can't yeah. go anymore that's like yeah. that's that's yeah. how i i right that we got to be but no it is true to like get everybody excited about it and keep them on and um but i will say there is this you know i i've done a lot of shoots like that and i've loved that void and no, just no. stretching yeah and it does you there is a sense of accomplishment and there is a sense of 100%. like just last day of summer camp feeling you right. know at the end because we all need to push again it's the workout you know and right, so right. it's just a good reminder of like i mean and it, or also there's serendipity in it too you know this thing we we just shot you know it's a skate park but you know i was like looking at this one they both had bridges um that kind of covered you know to my defense but this one was like lower and 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 cooler so we could actually shoot the lights up into it but also Haley was like thinking about a weather contingency right it's always a problem we had a week rain for weeks like yeah Rains right in the middle of the thing with robots, you know, out there. It's like, what and, time's the call time for the rainstorm? Oh, okay, yeah, great. The exactly. rain will be just right on time. Yeah. But, you know, she made the call on that. And, and you know, again, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. But it's like, there's no al alchemy in this, you right. know, it's just preparation. It's not, but like, that's the different subsets of what people do. And right. I love that part of it because right. it actually worked out better. And sure. be able to do the right. light there. And like, it, yeah. it just was better. It was right. easier. It was more contained. Right. You know, if it was a bigger place, it would have been harder to light, you right. know, like, so it's just those kind of like serendipitous things yeah. that happen too, you know, or that the happy mistakes. Right. Right. No, and it's, it's a, like and a it's, oh, yeah. it's also trust. You have to cultivate that team that you trust to make those choices. Right. That's huge. You know, if you, if you didn't know me at all as a producer and you came in and I was trying to tell you what location to shoot, I'd be like, who the hell is this person? <laughs> but I, I knew your vision. I knew we were going after and I, I thought this would be a good option. And it's whenever you're, you're making teams from all the way down to your PAs, it really matters to cultivate that. So you can get what you're looking for out of that moment of yeah. the last day of school feeling. Cause right. if there's one person that is off and not feeling that, it brings the whole set down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're shooting until 8 a.m., that's something really to, to protect. Yeah. yeah. No, no, how, how big was this crew, though? Like, probably like 20? 30, oh, wow. Yeah. 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 30 people. I mean, just you had to move, you know, it's like robots. Trying to keep outside, us, we had to move you know? people yeah. around and you know, do stuff. Yeah. But yeah, and, I mean, and also, it, you know, yeah, it, it it's it's trust too, but it's also stuff where, like, you know, hey, there's a goal, you know, you need to go down and, like, look at it, you know, and I'm right. like, you know, and I get there and I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm like, you know, it's classic you know, director bullshit. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, yeah, this is looking to work so great. Uh -huh. You know, I told her, I was like, she's like, how? I was like, it's actually so much better than I thought, you sure. know, like, this is perfect. And so, uh -huh. yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's that, that trust thing is so important, but our, our whole thing, like, goes on trust. I right. mean, 
I don't think people, I don't know if I should say this on like the video, but I don't think like clients realize like how, how much of a Hail Mary pass it is all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just yeah. the nature of, yes. of production. production yeah. you know? and, yeah. and to bring it back to food, I feel that way sometimes right. even more so. Sure. It's just like, just, you know, food sometimes as much as you can control it, you can't right. control it. And then some of the crazy stuff yeah, that you yeah. do with this, yeah. like, yeah. Like, yeah. That's even more right. insane. Sure. You know, it's like you guys could, you know, blow the building up. You know? <laughs> yeah. but, no, but no, I think going to your analogy though about the workout, you know, it's just like it, it's a team sport, first of all. We're working out together, yeah. right? Yeah. But we're like going straight into the game without like much practice as a team, right? So it's just like, I'm gonna throw it, you're gonna catch it, right? And it's just like that's that's a, the level of trust that's happening, I think, on all our shoots. Yeah. It's yeah. just like it's like, yes, you have a bunch of really good athletes that you're bringing together. But hey, if this one guy is bad on the team too, oh well, so, yeah. the, the quarterback just got sacked and you're you're done, you know. Yeah, so it's yeah, like it, it really is a really it delicate. Is, it's a job you need magic to happen like every time. Yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. the crazy part too. Yeah. It's like yeah. I mean, like I guess like when you work at the garage, like like you you're building up your team. Uh, but I don't know how it was you you like sometimes I do a job in in the Ukraine, and then I'm I got thrown to a whole different team. So within two days, I have to make sure. That they understand what we're doing, like like scribble some ideas down, right. like like right. scribble yeah. some. Yeah. You know, this is the rig yeah. that I want yeah. to try out, and like so within 24 hours, you you have to connect with the people, you have to yeah. trust the people, people have to yeah. trust you. Right. Um, that was like the AD I had in in Guadalajara when we shot down uh, there. Uh huh. I mean, you know, all they I've had some good ADs, so but like he was amazing. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, so important. Never would have yeah. known, but you know, yeah. the whole crew was great down there. When it was yeah. like, but it's blown away because it's just again you never know what you're getting into right you're just like oh how's this going to turn out yeah. but yeah. um that guy was awesome I mean, it was just amazing you just you go know? to play your best game and hope that yeah. the rest of the team is also you know there with you there, right yeah. and yeah. when you do have when yeah. you do have somebody that takes it to that next level you know it can be just right. something you know one little thing you know does that but yeah you're looking for i mean we're all looking for magic. I mean, that's that's right. what what we sell, right. you know. Yeah. And so that's why sometimes I'll like I'll like lock on to one shot or something too. You know, if I see, like, if we get into it and we get the camera going and I see a little something's happening, like we were doing the chips, you know, uh -huh. the road, uh -huh. and you this like tiny little depth depth of field on location, and you're just trying to nail. I mean, the thing's like it's it's like it's that fast. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. the eye has there's no idea if we got the shot, and you're on prime lenses. Right. I mean, right. it's just. It's just a nightmare for trying to get something into focus, right? right. But we tried a few times, but then you, you nail a couple, and yeah. you're just like, okay, like, yeah. all right, so again, like, like, I can breathe. You, if know? you do it in the studio, you have chips falling. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's in focus perfectly. You go outside, and then there's wind. Yeah, yeah. Chips, you yeah. know, we're like, yeah. <laughs> they have we're a certain amount of surface part, area yeah. that they want to fly away, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. No, everything's just harder outside. Yeah. I mean, you guys all shoot liquid, and yeah. you know, like the, the, the beauty of the liquid, every time you think that you're gonna get this splash or whatever, but you don't, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you, you move a rig a millimeter, and then you get completely different things yeah. and stuff like that. So I think that's, I mean, don't you feel like when, when everybody's like really putting their energy on set, I feel like there's like really like everyone's energy come together, and then I feel this like wavelength, and that's when I feel like magic happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. This energy, I feel the energy from you know rigor, yeah. uh, my my AC, whatever, like, and then it just happens, yeah. and I, I I that's why I like strive for. I feel like like you know it, it makes me like jump off of my chair <laughs> because like totally. Not, and I, I I read this interview where um, Stanley Kubrick said that like the worst part of the day is going out of the car and to enter to set. Like like you know like when you have everything in your mind and you have all the stress, you don't know if it's gonna work out. Yes. But once you go on set and you're like you realize that everyone is in the same boat with you, yeah. everyone wants to make it happen, and you feel like everyone is collaborating. Your DP, your AD, your right. producer, everyone, you feel like you're not alone in this. Yeah. Um, so cool. it makes you go like, oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. and then you'll they'll start showing you the first tests or like yeah, you see the lighting setup or you you see the image for the first time. Right. Um, right. And then you go like, oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I so crazy. I mean, I'll be honest. I I. I don't need to like boast about it. Like it's it, it's the weirdest art form, but it really feels like you're jumping out of an airplane for the first fucking time. <laughs> There's times where I get outside, I feel like, why are you like, why are you even feeling this way? Mm -hmm. You've done this a million times. This right. is so stupid. Right. Well, but sometimes it'll be like the dumbest, easiest thing, and just like, fuck, man. Like why why do I feel like I, you know like full imposter syndrome? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like is this gonna work? And then boom, yeah, you see it, and you're like. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Nothing better than the first shot of the day yeah. being, like, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you have a struggle, you're on the struggle bus on the first shot of the day, it's just like, oh, man, well, how's the rest of this day? You know, yeah. 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 But, but sometimes yeah. getting that best shot at yeah. the first try is not the best because we're always chasing that, sure. like, you know, best right. shot. I'm like, right. oh, my God, am I going to get this again? But, like, it just that's sometimes true. doesn't happen. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. it's chaos, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it, I, you, so, you got to embrace the chaos. If it's a one-day shoot, it's, like, even the worst thing. Yeah. ever too because you're just like we got to get this all done today no oh, matter what you know yeah no, i mean i i, I was talking to i don't know it's talking to you but like i was saying like the first time i like had a shoot that had any money like i just to me i'm going like oh my god somebody just gave me a house and this house has got to <laughs> be built in like 10 hours and i was like i'm fucking freaking out here <laughs> you know like it just hit me like look like what was on the line for yeah. the day you know and yeah. look and i was like oh shit but that was the, you know, that was the moment where I just realized, like, you got to be a little reckless, you know, you got to be a leader, you know, and you got to just say, fuck it, you know, it's like, right. I was thinking about risky right. business, like, yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you just got to say, oh, what the fuck, you yeah. know, and that's really a, a huge part of it, because right. once you go, like, you go, like, everybody's depending yeah. on you. There's no turning back. To get yeah. the thing yeah. done, yeah. and I think that's what, what separates people, you know, and, and I even, you know, like, when I started, I would hear the old stories of some of the directors that, like, you know, big egos and stuff, and they would storm off set or leave or be mean to people. But I, you know, I, I think back on it, like I bet a lot of those 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 directors, I bet a lot of them were like scared. Oh yeah, times. for oh, sure. Yeah. And I bet they were. I bet you know, you think they storm off and go get drunk or on the trailer <laughs> or talk shit. But I bet they were you know shit in their pants, and I bet that's yeah. how they yeah that's how they know, express themselves it's, right it's in order to take it off yeah. of them because yeah. they're fucking blowing it yeah you know put it on some dumb PA that just showed up you know with like the wrong thing uh -huh. and you're like you're an idiot and the PA's right. going like what the fuck what you're I do bring you, this? <laughs> you know and so it's like I I realized like some of that like toxicity that was around like as much as like some of it was fun and you like love those like cavalier days like I often wonder it, it, it just like now being 40 and like, <laughs> go like man i bet they were actually really scared oh for sure they were yes. really freaking out yeah you know? they're probably crying in the trailer exactly right yeah <laughs> then they call it mom <laughs> screaming everybody and then they're like <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry i hate myself yeah. um and not okay but it's like a testament to like probably how intense it probably yeah. it's so they intense for some people yeah. that they had to become these nightmares just yeah. to like keep you know the pressure off and fight for like one more day and of the, work and know? there's no stop until the day is over no. i mean it's like you're once you start that you know that's, that's it. it it's like a fire you know until it burns out like you know yeah, also like i mean like we have to pressure that like i feel like sometimes we're all, only as good as our last yeah project. exactly yeah, i was gonna say that we're just yeah, fighting that. for for a certain visual you know aesthetics whatever and then the client will say no we cannot do that because that will be too similar to our competitors brand or whatever. They'll, they'll have good arguments but then you yeah, go like oh. yeah because it's a business you know i mean that's i always have to remind myself i'm like you know like i'm work for hire you know yeah like, so yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. you know I do, there is that part of it but it is it's hard like you you kill a lot of dreams along sure. the way. and yeah. a lot of people yeah. don't, don't uh -huh. know it but those are the yeah. ones that you gotta like you know face by yourself yeah. and go like oh man like yeah no problem but really in your mind you're like damn i just thought about that for like two weeks straight yeah. you know and that's not happening right now i think there's not a single artist like that like us that doesn't have a day where you're like you switch between I'm never gonna work again. And oh, oh my absolutely. god, I'm so great. Why you know, I'm gonna be yeah. working like crazy. You know, like you're just it's like so ping pong, ping sure. pong, yeah, you know, absolutely. like and it's like no matter how good you are, I'm sure, you know, the, even Steven Spielberg and all these people probably have had yeah. those moments where you're just like, Okay, you're good, but like uh, do how many it, famous people yeah. like fell yeah. apart or you see them right. show up like years later and they look terrible, you know, it's right. like you know, all the money in the world is never gonna give you that high, right. you know, and that sense of accomplishment from doing like a good piece. And right. sure. you know, there's great actors and directors that like you're like that person directed that. Like, where the fuck are they? You know, like, <laughs> person is a genius, you know. And right. So it's like it, it really is a, a thing. But full circle on what we were talking about before, like that testing, that muscle, mm -hmm. that workout. Like, if you don't, you know, it's like an athlete. You know, if you don't enjoy that part of it. Then you're just going to be miserable because you're chasing yeah. it's about you know, the process right exactly yeah. it's about the process yeah. enjoying the process hey Wednesday. yeah no it, it's it's and again it's like i you know as i've gotten older too like cliches is something yeah, i was talking yeah. about you know people always oh that's cliche but you know I, i've realized i mean like cliches are around because it's just dead people from the past that have done it before just trying to help you out <laughs> like they're trying to pass these things on they're cliche for a reason, reason right. so they're not always cool 
to, you know, you don't, you know, but like, you got to listen to them, you right. know? And the older I get, I just realized that like, man, like, like some of these like old cliches, like they, they matter. And it is about the process. And that's like one I hear all the time and you go, oh, blah, 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 it's so cheesy. I mean, but maybe the cliche at the time that was invented or created. No, no, it wasn't a that was the shit at cliche, the time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's the, it's the most hot stuff. And everybody says yeah. it and it's like, shut up. Exactly. You know? But the thing is, is I think there's no other word for it. You know, that's, that's, that really is the process, you know, and that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so, interesting. Can you tell me, how'd you get started in this? Uh, personally, I mean, started from like immigrating to a new country, um, originally from South Korea, moved to, at a later, later age, like 17. So oh, wow. there was definitely a huge language barrier. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak a word of English oh, wow. when I landed from a plane. Um, and I used to love reading and writing and creative writing and I couldn't do it. And it was really, you know, hard for me just mm -hmm. not to express or artistically, there was no outlet for me. And I guess my mom couldn't really, you know, see me like that. So she actually gave me, hey, do you remember your grandfather gave, gave you this camera? Why don't you like, go start taking picture. And I'm like, huh? Like, and first time I held the camera and took a snapshot, I was like, whoa, this is it. I fucking love this. So that's how I started. And, and that was your grandfather's camera? Yeah, my first camera was my grandpa's camera. And then started with black and white, uh, started taking pictures, like, again, like- It was film. It was so film. you didn't know what the film looked like. You no, just, you heard not the snap, at all. You heard no, the snap, that, that, you were like, I don't know what's going I don't on. That know. little machine in there. That I don't even know it was like loaded, whatever. It was just, I was just like playing with it. I was, but it was just like, you know, like just that box inside Shot some the of your camera. Best work. Yeah. No film in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just awesome. And just the feel of like, you know, like you framing, co compositing something, you know, pointing somewhere and then like, oh, wow, this is, this, this is what I see right now. This is right. the world. And right. I want to like, you know, document this or, yeah. But how did that get lead you to food? Uh, and then oh, yeah. I started the, like a photography, like I went to school for photography and I was like a commercial, like a still life photographer forever. But like, it just, I love food always. I don't like eat a lot, but like, I mean, uh, you know, I like having, you know, approach, like I, I like having like my perspective on food, like, you know, especially moving to a new country, everything was like new. Like, right. you know, all, I was telling you, I grew up with like country where the fr we only ate fruits in season, for instance. Right. And then I moved to North America. There's a, like you know abundance of like availability yeah. on everything, and I like it's just like kind of opened my eyes. I was like, oh, it's not just you know, for instance, like a Korean food, but there is like you know, being in being in Canada, it was just like all the cuisines were available. Yeah, like fourteen. Yeah, like, yeah, like <laughs> so everything that I ate in like you know America, it was just like, oh my god, this is new, this is new, this is new, and then like. You know that really kind of like interests me and like and then the whole like getting into like a restaurant going to a restaurant like the food scene so well when did you say like i want to start shooting food like when did you turn the camera on food uh i mean throughout my whole career in photography but mostly like you know transitioning into motion like i kind of wanted to pick or special uh, specialty and food was my interest just and that's when i sort of really dig into food you know exploring um practicing and things like that so you were you were that you were that much into just food in general you were kind of like starting to like have this romance with like all the different types of food yeah i think it just grew like personally you know like and i start cooking too you know uh, yeah and that really helped like Sorry. yeah so yeah it's just like naturally i don't know if i really like well, when did you see the art in it? Because, I mean, I feel like every, when you shoot food, I mean, you have to look at food differently, you know? Like, you, you just do. Like, when did you start seeing? Oh, so when I, whenever, when I start shooting food, I start, like, buying books, like, you know, plating or, you know, uh, decorating things. Like, so when I look at chefs doing this beautiful plating or, like, you know, it wasn't, food wasn't just the taste. It was about presentation or, like, sometimes it's about, a plate or, um, you know, ambiance or right. whatever. So like that really opened my eyes in terms of how I look at food or how I shoot food. It's not just, yeah, like it's food needs to taste good and look good, but it's, it's not just about that, but I can bring in all these other things like propping or like location, whatever to enhance or like, 
you know, make it make it my my thing. So yeah, that's that's when I like really start liking it. Yeah, cool. so I can I can sort of you know plan or so like the whole table come together. Yeah, yeah, start bringing these elements that 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 really makes this you know image something different. Yeah, yeah. like layering flavors, but you're also layering the space around those flavors, right? Right. You know, as far as like creating a world. Yeah, even like, like a uh, feeling yeah. lighting, right? Like you know. Afternoon lighting on food on something looks totally different than like, you know, middle of the nighttime, day. middle of the day, whatever. Like, like just take that cup of coffee, you know, like you can have it like bright or like make it very dim and like have like like a light from behind. You see the steam and whatever, and like suddenly it becomes a whole different thing. Yeah. And if you can evoke memories, like if you say, oh, like morning coffee, uh, all the sunlight coming through the window, and, and instantly, like I think it's that. It's like creating so related, yeah. creating yeah. memories and. And uh, I mean, like that, that's how like we humans started, right? We, we invented how to make fire. And the first thing we did was like sit around a fire, cook and tell stories. Yeah. Right. Right. And then probably, you know, he ended up, he did up something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this tastes really good. Yeah. 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 Really good. And what if he's put fire on this leaf? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, like food has everything in it. Like, you know, food has, you know, texture, colors, you know, everything that comes in this world. It's, it's, true, it's yeah, all in here. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know. It's like a universal language too. Everybody eats. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the really unique thing about shooting food is like you're speaking a universal language yeah. uh, with people, and you know if it's real or fake, or if you, you know you could you could tell all those things. And I think we're an extension of communicating in, in just a, a deliciousness, whatever whatever you want to, whatever adjective you want to throw in front of it that our plants love. It, it evokes this visceral feeling because I, I feel like like there's two things who do that like puppies and <laughs> <laughs> it's like either you go like. Oh, or you go like, oh, and you yeah, know, like yeah. if you see that burger, that cheese pull, that you know, like that gooey, crunchy, whatever it is. Like when people go like, oh my god, like that's the best thing someone can tell me. Like they they see my spot and go like, I'm I'm so crave craving a burger now. <laughs> yeah, so you've I done mean, your it job. speaks to something that's just so ingrained. I mean, go anywhere in the world, you know, food, everything we've done, all the good, all the bad in this world has been to satisfy that hunger pain. You know, my dad, like my dad was a crazy workaholic, but he taught me when I was younger to work through hunger pain. Mm. I used to be like, you're out of your fucking mind. Like you're crazy, just get me a, you know, firehouse sub or something, <laughs> you know, like I'm digging ditches all day, you know, this is crazy. But he would tell me, man, he would say like, you know, learn to control that, that hunger. Cause that's what turns us into animals, right? Uh, um, mm. um, it's all in us, you know, and I never got it. But now, you know, if I'm on set and I'm going and everybody's freaking out and like, hey, I'll be like, hey, you need to eat something. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. I'm oh, just snacking on like some nuts or whatever. She's but so good at that. I could go, 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 go. And that's how I can turn that little voice off in my head that goes like, me, me, me. Like, mm -hmm. I need that. And um, it is. It's just, it's it's so ingrained in everything, you know, that we did. And, and also, like, I, for me, like, food always was, I loved the relationship between which is kind of how I got into because I love lifestyle, I love fashion, you know, I love, like love shooting people or locations. But I realized I had a couple jobs and then, and I love food, like I'm actually <laughs> like a, a food person just naturally. For me, one thing that got me into food was just people's relationship with it. You know, right. I, I, I love, I love that idea of just that story behind, it. you know, the old sit down at the coffee table, mm -hmm. you know, with dad or mom or, you know, mom's, you know, cooking something and you, you know, coming in like a classic commercial and you're running in from outside and you're playing, you know, and it's just, you know, that those moments are so nostalgic and there's just not a person on earth that like doesn't understand what you're right. talking about. And for me, that was always kind of like the thing that just like clicked for me. I was right. like, it's people and food, like people's relationship to food is so important. And mm -hmm. so I always thought that there was just stories there. Like I like little, little stories. And I was like, that was the thing where I realized it's like, man, like that's such a relatable story, mm -hmm. but also there's a lot of beauty in it, you right. know? And like how many movies they'll have a whole scene going on, but it's people sitting at a dinner table, right. you know, they were like moonstruck or something like that. You know, right. like you always go in and you know, they're at the dinner table or like, you know, Seinfeld, you know, it's like the kitchen and the living rooms right there every right. episode, you know, it's like, it's always there. Right. You know. No, I feel like it touches, food is a unique thing where it touches all your senses too. And yes. it just, yeah. and it, you don't need to be in front of it to touch all the senses either. Just seeing the visuals that we make of it yeah. could mm -hmm. like make somebody remember a smell and a sound and a time and a place. And, a, you know, and I think that's a really interesting thing about it. It's like, it's almost too easy for us, like sometimes to, to 
resonate yeah. with people because you're just like, oh, if I shot this one thing beautifully, like suddenly they're, you know, they're, poof, their mind goes, you know, could either whether they're aware of it or not, like yeah. suddenly take them back to something, it's, you know, like oh, with their family or their family members or their, you know, somebody they dated or whatever, you know, you never yeah. know, whatever it is. Well, they just want it. Like yeah. New, yeah. New York pizza touches me a little too often. <laughs> I'll just be walking home I mean, and I'll smell it, you know, and I'm just like, I like, I really shouldn't do this right now, but I'm going to stop here and have a slice of pizza, you know? And so it's just the best thing in the world when it yeah. hits, but it's just like, yeah, I won't even, I won't even know what shop it is. Yeah. I'll just, I'll smell it and I'll be like, oh yeah, like pizza. That's, I mean, that's kind of like what we do too. You know, it's just, it's a, you know, it's a reminder of, of, you know, to the world because other people right. with, you know, they're, they're working, you know, jobs you yeah. know, just out in the world. And then, you know, just seeing it and seeing it in a beautiful light just makes you go, Oh, I remember that. So, like, whether they do it right in that moment or they do it later, yeah. it's like that's what a commercial is, right. you know. And it's also commerce, you know. That was one thing. Like, I realized at one point, I was like, "She was oh commercials, you know." But I realized, like, how the how the how the hell do you sell stuff to people if you don't remind them that the stuff right. is out there? Yeah. You know. I mean, it's it, and it, it in a weird way. I mean, it, it keeps the the world's economy going. <laughs> you know, it's how we sure. get the message out to people. Absolutely. It's all about communication, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, and I, th I think we're also in a really unique place, and I struggle with this sometimes too, where it's just like, I wish I was being hired by to shoot just fruits and natural foods and sell people like the very best foods that are yeah, good yeah. for them. Exactly. You know, but nowadays, for better or worse, it's a lot of the brands are the ones that, you know, have really processed foods, and, you know, yeah. it's a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, I look at it as like, we're getting, we're able to make this work and hire a crew of people and give them a living, yes. you know, and if I, I have to work for a brand that, you know, maybe isn't the best thing for the world, but they are doing good things through us, but they, you they know, it's hard. Feeding, yeah. You know, like, look, I mean, I have my, my relationships with processed food yeah. and all this stuff, but like at the same time, it's like, you know, there were not that long ago. I mean, like when my family got to this country, like, like people just didn't have that much food, right. you know, yes. like, people just, exactly. like exactly. they just didn't, they were they right. had farms, you know, right. so like, there is an argument sometimes I do get, I, we can always do better and right. we should always strive for better food. And I've seen some of them actually make some, some steps in the right direction yeah. when, when you get the masses along with it. But, you know, there is a side to it too, where it's like, look, they do provide a huge amount of food for yes. people, you yes. know, and, and, you know, not everybody has the means to do, you know, right. the organic stuff. But yeah, that's, that's like, that's part of it. You right. know, you gotta, you gotta, find that balance or you got to find you know brains you want to work with like sometimes we'll do stuff with some people like i know they don't have like a big budget but you know something i'm really into right. you know and then i've had some of those clients like do better and then come back right you know with actual mm -hmm. like but like oh man the company's like grown mm -hmm. want to hire you and so you know it's a it's a it's a struggle sometimes like with that right you know but that's that's at least how i rationalize it, sure you know sure, I just go sure. like all right you know but yeah. but also you know it's like some of those foods are you know, it's like distribution, you know, right. like all that. Like right. they're able to get it out yeah. to people. And there's a million and one granola bars <laughs> in Brooklyn, you know. Right. Yeah, shoot exactly. all day and it'd yeah. be amazing, you're, you know, but like it's just not out in the world, right. you know. So that's something that's definitely changing though now, I feel like with the social media and all that stuff happening, it's like a lot more micro brands. Yeah. And you see in the beauty yeah. space like yeah. crazy. I think in the food space you see way more and more. And I think the, the younger generation is actually more about like, oh, who are you as a brand? What are you doing for the world? Where, where's your place within the world? Yeah, and and their message that. also has to become, and I think those little brands will slowly keep growing and growing as far as the type of people that employ us as yeah. well, I think, you know. Yeah, um, and getting those people, that's an, it's, it's an interesting, point, interesting point you brought up, but like some of those, you know, brands, you know, like I think a lot of people don't understand the power of like advertising. Yeah. I, I really do, like, because it, Again, you know, I always felt this about cell phones and, you know, metrics and engagement, right? In the beginning, it was like crack. I mean, it was the most, probably the most addictive drug on planet Earth. And it was in the hands of everyone. So, of course, if you had the means to do a big media buy, you'd have good engagement. You just got it in front of people that are completely addicted to something. Right, right. You know? right. But as time has gone on, people will do things and they go, oh, I don't know well, why is it doing as well. We put, you know, X amount of dollars into it. And, and again, for me, it's been very nice because I realized like, oh, creative doesn't matter. You know, Absolutely. how you reach people, what you can, because 
people aren't dumb. Like they're just not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like we all like yeah. to say that and I think we're smarter, but it's like people really aren't dumb. Like they know what they like and they know right. what's good creative. Yeah. So if you feed someone sugar and crap all the time, they'll start to feel terrible about it. And I feel like creatives like that. And I feel like social in a lot of ways kind of opened the floodgates because you had such a um, powerful tool there to get it to people. But as the years have gone on, it's like the creative really matters, but like how to get some of those brands as they grow to get out of that, like you can't, it can't always be this <laughs> lo-fi social thing right. because eventually people, and, and that is one thing about the new generation though, I will say they move on quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They move sure. on real fast. Right. And, right, right. and I just seen a lot of brands and I think that's like where they, they blow it. They jump on a trend, right? Right. You know, they get on it, they have a niche, they jump on a trend and they're hot. And then this generation is this not like the old school? Where like I had, I had one soap. I used that bar of soap for the whole <laughs> life. One you know, deodorant. Yeah. I, you know, like they're, they're on to the you know the next. There's a million and one inventions, right. and so. But you know that's where creative really does matter, and that's for like building a brand. You know, mm -hmm. through like you know story and visuals. It's just it, you know I, I have some smaller clients I'll work with sometimes, and you know we'll do a little more like marketing stuff, and I go like why like why do you think McDonald's spends all that. Mo you think they're just doing that as a write-off? It's like it's not just a write-off. Like right. they they spend all that money or coke. Like they're not doing that for their own like just mm -hmm. personal gratification. You know, like like they do it because it it works. Yeah. And there's a reason why you hire real people to right. do this stuff. Right. Um. And sometimes that's like the moment where people kind of get it. They go like, Oh, like, no, no, I I understand. Right. It's like it's not it's not just some made up you know, yeah. thing. It's, it's actually a very powerful tool. Right. Um, and I feel like a lot of times that just gets, you know, newer brands that like they, they forget that. And I was trying to say, I'm like, I'm saying you have to have everything, but like you gotta have a marketing budget. Right. And be consistent. I yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. Dude, yeah, consistency yeah, yeah, yeah. is everything. Yeah. 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 As again, a brand, you gotta be the same brand this month, next month, a year from yeah. now, like, and, and people really need to understand it. First of all, and so many brands that I talk to, I don't know about you guys that like, like they don't really know who they are yet yeah. either like especially oh, the younger yeah. brands is like oh but we're, oh we're a, a this and a that and it's just like no but who are you as yeah. a brand you know but you have um, like the, there's a, this it's the moment right now where a lot of old brands conservative brands want to you know reinvent themselves they right. can come new and fresh and then they all always come with a lure pack board and go <laughs> like we want to have this but like our thing like can you like invent a visual something that makes yeah. us stick out and you go like I, I cannot reinvent how we shoot food you know yeah i can i can definitely bring my flavor to the table mm -hmm. but i cannot make this thing that only you will own and uh, you know a visual style and they'll go like yeah but like come up with something crazy and I'm like what do you mean with crazy like right. you know it's like and it, i feel like a lot of times they put this pressure on us to come up with the impossible um and 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 you're kind of like uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like yeah, I right. just do my without thing. without giving you the room to play around. So we exactly. so we specifically have done some jobs for Pepsi that have been amazing jobs. And I think what has brought the most success to them is they came to us with that thing. We want mind blowing soda like you've never seen before. You know whatever it is. Like, okay, great. I need to explore. Like yeah. I I'm not gonna just have it in my head. Exactly. You know exactly. like pay us to do a week or two weeks or whatever of just messing around and see what we could figure out and like we once again within the garage where we have a super you know effects rigging department robots all this you know crazy stuff to play with but let's make a new thing for you and that is when we really shine because like you have a lot of time to kind of dive in yeah. and really explore and then show that to them and then see what ideas even come from that and then you end up somewhere really interesting no when, what brands have that like the time and the budget to let you kind of like come up with like some rig or, right. or stuff that's amazing right. most times they they don't have the time right. right you have to fight for like a day or two of testing right um and also when you come up with stuff they go like what can you show us like is there a reference that we can see is like yeah. okay we're trying to make something new make something new <laughs> There is no reference for right. it, yeah. and they go like, mm, "No, but don't, we don't feel comfortable then uh -huh. going." Hack. Can you storyboard that new thing for yeah. me first, so I can send it to my CMO and yeah. get it signed off on? I'm like, after I do it, after I do the testing, then we could do that. Yeah. So no, but I think I, I'm, my hope for the future is brands will understand that they're, there's they need to be a little more experiential, a little more experimental, take a few more risks, and and they just kind of be. trust in the creators too. We're like, oh yeah, we're gonna trust you to do something amazing for us that 
like it's like when you shot film, right? You shot film and everybody believed that the film was going to come out great and yeah. then you're going to get it back for the lab and it was yeah. look beautiful. Like that, that, that trust has been lost, I feel like, in the digital world where they want to see it and they're there and they yeah. can weigh on it at the second that you're shooting it and try to change it if they feel like it versus like trust us, film's going to look great. Yeah. We'll put in the edit, we'll color it and then you'll see it yeah. and then we'll, we'll start tweaking. You I know, have to think yeah. about uh, Fernan Adria, like this famous molecular um, like chef you know, who had a bully and, and, and oh, outside, yeah, like yeah. Uh, uh, Barcelona. And he had this Harvard talk. I think it's still online. And he said, like, there's three types of creativity. Like, there's imitation. You know, there's, like, you see something and you replicate it. Then there's uh, um, uh, reinvention. Like, no, no like, 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 um, uh, like you do your own version of it. You sign, sure. like, you see an omelet and then you will do, like, a Texan omelet. Like, sure. put beans or whatever. Um, so you'll see a shot and you're like, oh, that works for a burger how right. about we do this for you know like a yeah, cake yeah. or whatever and you sort of like you, you get inspi inspiration from one thing and just build on top and then the, he says that there's reinvention there's there's coming like like with a complete new concept sure and that's why he closed down his uh, restaurants and he just became a lab because he became that like i want to develop recipes i want to make things that then other people can either uh, remix reinvent or right. imitate and i think if people come, brands come and want us to do something fresh and new, they have to, like, you know, let us have that time and money for a lab, right? You know, for right. a week, uh, a month, or even yearly. Like, like the best thing is if Pepsi could come and yeah. it would say, like, Steve, we're gonna pay you for the whole year uh -huh. to develop. Oh my God, the result would be amazing. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. yeah, yeah, no. And, and someone just testing. Free. I mean, yeah, you know, you do sort of like incredibly inventive stuff. You know, it's like wow, but like. In reality, it is sometimes like you know I'm a firm believer in a beautiful shot, you know, um, and and sometimes like you know, testing helps helps you help them. Mm -hmm. Like they want that vote mm -hmm. of confidence. That's how I get that vote of confidence. I you know because I I'll test stuff with the iPhone if I don't have any, right, right. but I gotta see it, right? Because right. I right. you do all the work in your head, but right. until you see it, right? And I edit as well. Like I you know help <laughs> with the whole thing, but even then, until I do it it's really hard to tell someone if it's going to work right, right. right. so testing is just it's huge you know mm -hmm. it's, it's it, it, it again i agree like that's where the great you know inventions come from but just in general they want that they want that like mm -hmm. insurance policy right. that's right. your insurance policy right. is right. is testing, testing you yes. know because that's when i'm like yeah when we show up like i know how this you know is going to work right it looks good yeah. I'm cool. Like, let's go, you know, and then the magic's got to happen because yeah. Yeah, we're not magicians, you know, like there's a process <laughs> yeah. that yes. we have to go yes. through. Yeah. 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 And we each have our own process too. That's yes. one yeah. thing that when people are like, oh, but you know, you're competing, co you, he's your competitor director. I'm like, you gave us the same boards, the same budget, the end result will be totally different. Yeah. You know, like that, that's the thing. That's like the part we're not that. really competitors in some way in that we're such unique image makers in our own mind on how we do things. So I think you know, I think that's a really interesting thing that so many people get caught up on and why I shared my behind the scenes from the very beginning, that was just a huge for us, yeah. was just like, yeah, this is what I did. Yeah, you sure you could copy that and or try to copy that, but what I get hired for is the next thing I'm going to do, you know? And it's just I, not that easy. I mean, that's the no, thing, too. Not like, you're not your shot. So I'm like, okay, dude, put yeah. that operation yeah. together, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. now no, we're, if you yeah. do that, like, like, you can come hang out. Hey, like, I'm a fan. Because it's just, like, yeah. Yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. You know, you might be able to pull it off on, like, a janky or smaller level. But, yeah. like, yeah. it's just, it's such beyond <laughs> that, like, someone's just going to, like, hijack it. I don't, yeah. there was yeah. always Still, stuff like that. It would drive me nuts. Like, I know so many, like, like other directors who, like, I, I stay in touch with over Instagram and and then you would go like oh I I, I stole the shot from you oh this is great I'm gonna uh -huh. steal this from you like, uh -huh. and it's like it, it's funny because it's it's not really stealing um but it's kind of like 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 <laughs> like saying like hey man like like we're, we're all pushing this thing forward and and I mean I mean like like tabletop is evolving so much and becoming fresher and modern and 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 you know like like I think if brands understand what's possible you know, like, and, and we sort of like build on top of each other and help each other out and, and inspire each other. We're just going to do better work and more people are going to go like, oh, well, so visual engineering, tabletop, like we want to do more of that, yeah. you know? And, and, and I think it goes also beyond just food, you know? Yeah. It, oh, big time. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, in reality, you know, I mean, obviously we're all, everybody tries to put you in a box, but like, I mean, I, 
you know, if I had to be honest with the client or somebody, I'd be like, you know, pick anybody at the table, give them anything, like they'll fucking shoot you something great, you know? Right, like, right. You know, I mean, that's really the, I, I believe a good director should be able to just kind of direct any, everything. I mean, sure. Everybody has their strong suits, but like, right. that's what people don't know. I mean, it's right. like, it could be a plate of food. It right. could be that microphone, you know, right. it's just, that's, that's what a director does, you yeah. know? It, um, yeah, like same thing, you put me, you gave me like, oh, Steve, direct cars it's just like okay give me a year yeah the car or a month maybe whatever yeah. it is like i'm sure i could direct cars really well after once again spending the ten thousand hours to exactly. be really good at something maybe not another ten thousand but <laughs> you know like just that drive but where to... you're at now you could you could do that oh for like, sure. that's yeah. like that's my point once yeah. that muscle is yes. strong yes. and you have yeah. that eye yeah you yeah. know it's like but you you would have a different approach you, oh yeah, like put a robot inside the car <laughs> and just go from the steering like wheel into the wheel radio and, and it'll yeah. be driving too yeah. yeah you know like like you you'll come up with way different like yes. approaches of right. like showing the interior of the car than right. you know which is else, which know? is fun too or i think yeah. i think there was always something interesting when sometimes they would hire like fashion people to shoot food sometimes and just be like it's a different perspective yeah. like you know, if you sure. actually want to yeah. see yeah. something new it could be actually really bad sometimes but you know it is throw something at somebody that they're not comfortable in and mm -hmm. if they say yes and they're going to commit to doing it i think there's something could really good could come out of that and so some of my best jobs have been when people take a risk on us they're like oh okay we know you've done this and you do you know but you know how about you know this kind of thing you know this product you know it's like oh i haven't really done technology but sure let's do it you it know like a little bit yeah, too. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's i think cool. you got to be uncomfortable sometimes you know like they i think there's this that's the only way of growing right? yeah. yeah like when you feel you're outside of the comfort zone right that's why i tell myself like i feel nervous i feel anxious i'm yeah. out of my comfort zone i'm growing right. yeah. <laughs> again yeah, so true. yeah like the uh what's the saying about like um Horseshoe crabs. One of, like there's some sort of sea creature. I forgot what it is that like eventually grows to its shell. Yeah, the lobster. Yeah, the lobster. It yeah. gets uncomfortable. So the only way to grow is to leave the shell and be super vulnerable, and that's when you can get eaten, and then find your new shell and grow into that. So I think you you have to be the uncomfortable. Crab. Yeah, the yeah, or whatever. And a few of those yeah, different yeah, things, yeah, but crab, yeah. but I think you know if you're too comfortable, then you got to get uncomfortable. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean that's you know again that's the workout. You right. know, it's, right. it's just. No, it's, yeah, it's you're not, not getting fun out. anymore. You know, you know, it's like, not like, hey, fun, this is Dave and Buster's. It's like, no, dude, this is workout. You're going to work. <laughs> this is going to suck, you know. And even with men, you get food. stronger. Right. It's like, it, it, there's liquids, there's chocolate, there's right. syrups, there's right. cheese, there's burgers, there's flames, there's, you know, there's so many things. Um, and then you go like, oh, but I really haven't done, you know, this particular thing. So, like, yeah. I figure it out, you right. know. And like Shane Green said, there's just the textures and food. It's just like, there's so much. Yeah, there's just a whole variety of things. And I, I think you can apply the things that you know to a lot of different things and then come back with like, it will it will return us completely new. And that's, right. that's what's fun about being a director. And I think that's something about fun about our experience too, where, you know, like what well, all of what we do, we create a world that we shoot in yeah. now, but we didn't start there, right? Like right. you had a camera, you documented the world. Yeah. Because you, I, th I feel like we're trying to understand what the world is like through a lens, mm -hmm. and then we could create our own world. Absolutely, you know. And I think it's that journey. I think is really important. Where some people just try to go right into making their own world, yeah. but I think you need to have a, a grip in what the it real world happen. is yeah. first, you know. And that's where the dark room is so magical to have that experience too, yeah. and like the optical process and all that. And I think, you know, I think that's why, you know, the young generations like film's cool again, yeah. and like they all want to shoot because like. They want to. They 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 missed out on that root of yeah. you know of it all. The and mystery like, too of not knowing. Yeah, like, right. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I, I'm again. This part that drives me a little nuts about today, myself included, is like I can fucking see everything. Right. And I'm shooting raw. I'm right. just like, right. Right. all right, the brake lights are good. Like, <laughs> you know, mess with your scopes, but those don't mean anything. Like on the red camera, which is brake lights. But like back in the day, I and mean, you had to have a DP or be a DP. You had to you know check with your light meter. Right. It wasn't overly complicated, but you had to. You had to effing know. Right. Check because the gate. If you got yeah, you had to check the gate. Yeah. <laughs> like if you got into the, the, the screening room with the dailies and you got your film back and it was underexposed or I mean like and you didn't have a lot of telecine back then. And you would have to let the studio man. there. You would have to like 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 rent the studio for a week because you stopped shooting. Yeah. You go check the footage, you develop like everything and and if if something went wrong, you had to go back and, and yeah. shoot it. So everything has to stay the same. So like you had to really know your craft. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, and yeah. that's the it thing. took time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, like uh, I heard like this. So I used to assist a photographer. He was older, and 
one day we were having a couple of drinks and he was like, you know, he's like, I'm really angry about like what's happening with photography. And I was like, what, what do you mean? And like, he's the one who transitioned into digital photography from film. And he was like, it took me like 15 years to get here, right? Or 20 years, whatever, to learn app stops, whatever, film sensitivity. But then younger generation, everything happens in like within like years or, but, or less. Months. And yeah. he was like, it pissed me off that, you know, people don't appreciate the craft that I put in to get here. And thinking that okay, I can get there in like a year, like yeah. him. But it that's yeah. that's well, really not the case. It, it's training, you know. It's training your eye. It's the focus. It's just all these like stupid things that come along with what we mm -hmm. do. That like like if we, if 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 it's just excessive. I mean, like I even think about you know even digital media when I started. You know, some of the first jobs I did were on the Red One. It was incredible. <laughs> it was digital. <laughs> People kind of had cameras, you could put prime lenses on them and you could shoot 4K and you could shoot like 120 frames. That looks cool. Or even 220, I think. But, but the point was, is like, you just, you didn't have a lot of media. So even then I still had to really think about it. Right. It's like, right. now, you, I mean, you can just shoot, 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 shoot. And I'm all for coverage. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. But like, it, 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 if you do that, you're just shooting stuff and then going like, oh, I took a good photo. Like I still put the you know roll of thirds on my you know camera a lot of the time right. and do it because it's like i just need to see that composition and see where like a you know right. a frame is placed because it's like just shooting stuff it, it's right. like any idiot can do that yeah you know? well i think now that speaking to that was like the fact that the technological hurdle way down here mm -hmm. now i mean you used to like have to know chemistry and all this stuff to do image making right and right. i think that's good that's not going to slow down that's actually accelerating so like, even after because like i start when film wasn't a thing anymore so everyone was transitioning to digital and um and but you still figured out all these ways to get digital looking more like film even before you know like like i do it all the time now with emulsion things right. in the color you know right and then you like right. started like hacking the dslr cameras right. like putting ma magic lantern on it right. you could yeah. have like you know it's yeah, like kind of like yeah. and you become like this geek like trying to and then suddenly you have this whole generation who just right. has amazing tools out of the box that that instantly create what you right. had to like learn how to programs well, it's, it's about the choices yeah. now it's about yeah. the choices right. now but you don't you don't learn to make good choices unless you have that eye you have that focus right and so the irony of it is is like it's a successive thing and you might nail a few things but like that hard of like making sure like okay it's a shot right is it really right. good is what makes things beautiful when so you stuff the, the choice and you have to zoom out too it's just like no but beyond all the cameras all the, it's like what's the story we're trying to tell this one just went off. Okay. Like at the end of the day, what's the story yeah. you were trying to tell? You know, like that. Yeah. You could have all the cameras in the world. You could have the best crew in the world. But if you don't have a defining story for the brand or for whatever you're trying to do, it doesn't matter if it's on film or digital. Like that's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, I think it's really easy to get caught up. I did. I, I, I'm guilty, you know, of yeah. like on the technology and the thing and like, ah, oh, look, but look how cool that is. But like, oh, does it cut in right? The, the, yeah. The, the, like, how does the whole story tell? Like, does it make yeah. you hungry? Does it make you want to buy the thing? Or, you know, like at the end of the day, like the other shit doesn't matter. Right. You know, you could shoot on a crappier thing at a high ISO and like whatever. But if the story is amazing. You look past that. You yes. know? And I think I think it's it's really important to understand the craft. But also, what are you doing this for? What's the story yeah. involved? You know? I mean, I, I edit, so like I just naturally, I've been doing it for right. 20 years. So I naturally right. just think about when I'm shooting stuff. Mm -hmm. right. I'm just like, just fucking put, turn the camera on it real quick. Just <laughs> shoot. Like, cause I've been in edits where I go like, shit, man. Like, if I just turn the damn, if I just need one thing to cut to, uh -huh. one, that's like coverage wise, so right. important. But you're I there, so, so you, you have to go fish it. You have to get it. You yeah. Know? Like, even if you don't use it, but you, if you have those five minutes where nothing, cause happens. I might, and I, the amount of times where the clients come and said like, hey, like, you know, well, what about this shot or that? And so it's always that one. And I'm right. like, got something for you. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's just like, you, you got to have the coverage. But like, I think in, yeah. in edit, you know. Sure. And then look, I mean, some of these kids are, you know, are brilliant and some of the stuff they're, they're doing. But, you know, it's just, it's about the choices, but there is beauty mm -hmm. to what we do. And there's a reason why, you know, I see these like, creators and these people do stuff and I go, oh, it's amazing. And they spend so much time with the transitions and I'm like, oh, it's fascinating. But then they'll see something that's just beautifully lit, mm -hmm. looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And then just like, that's so fucking cool. I want to do that one day. That's where they're trying to get. Right, right. You know, right. because at the end of the day, you know, it's like you still walk into the Sistine Chapel, you know, and you look up and you're like, whoa. <laughs> you know, like, 
the art yes. the art still yes. still holds you know like you'll never i mean that's you know again the whole this is all their topic but the whole ai thing i mean that's the thing where it's like you can make some beautiful images but eventually it'll it'll you know become about like well, if the image means nothing like i'll want something that like you did or you right. did or you did like i just i want something human mm -hmm. because yeah. it's special to me right because humans are special to me without it you know it's just it's well it's nothing. that that yeah. understanding of the human being you know like the the human condition you know let's yeah. call it you know like it, yeah i don't know if ai is ever gonna truly understand that at that time and place and but yeah but let's not go down the ai route not, we could go it's, we could go down a whole thing. but even if it does yeah. i'm just saying that like yeah, yeah. we we love humans yes, you know yes, like yes, and that's yeah. that's the thing you will know no matter how real and how right. m much i fool myself on it like right, right. there's some organic side to like you got you know us just being here right now that's what's fascinating and around that's, other humans doing this magic. thing together right and yeah. trying to figure it out like i love the messiness of it you know like if everything's perfect it's just kind of yeah. weird you know right. like i love when things are humans are messy yeah or you're trying sure. to navigate your way and that's how you make new friends is how you make great relationships right. it, about like how we're building a world where we're building memories and sometimes like when a client wants something very slick very sterile very clean um, but like, like you want a little bit of messiness. You want a bit like you want that crusty old like uh, you know French press in the background. You know that you know if you just look at it, it looks messy and dirty and rusty and horrible. But it just suddenly you know it brings that image. Yeah, you're creating right. You're bringing that prop into your frame composition that it didn't exist, and then you're creating that atmosphere or like a feeling. It, right, or if you look like the food sauce is doing something, and then just like the sauce drips on the table, and he wants to clean it, you go, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. amazing because it's just like right there, like the the, yeah. the light hits it beautifully, and you go like, yes, it's it's messy, but it's 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 beautiful because it, of its messiness. Right, right. right. Yeah, no, and I think that's you know we'll we'll see where it all goes, but I think there. Like people are like, ah, AI, AI. I'm like, CGI has been around for a long time, and everything has been replaced by CGI. Yeah. For a reason, you know. So it's I still think, think man. yeah, I and, mean, like CGI is still yeah. like, and people today are still, now, still shooting. Like, people are still shooting film today too, right? right? Yeah. So like, the, I think for all the, the the crazy new thing, there's always a lot of a, a return to the roots of what we know we loved. Too, yeah, you know. And but and the beauty of it is, I mean, you know, people always talk about the beauty is, I mean, we we democratize the tools right for everybody. Right. Yes. and and you know, for me, like I'm a fan of art. Obviously, there's competition <laughs> and there's stuff, and you want to be competitive, but like. The cool thing is, is they, we really have democratized the tools. Right. The the irony of it for me is, is like, you can have all, I'm realizing you can have all the tools in the world. You might have one good moment. Right. You right. know, but I've been, you know, at the shit for quite some time, <laughs> a lot of ups and downs and things, uh -huh. trials and tribulations, personal, business wise, everything. And that's what separates mm -hmm. what I think the artist right. from, you know, the creator or somebody just made something good like right. like the amount of times i had somebody show me something go like we want to do this this was viral i go the kid's clearly a genius and he's been sitting in his mom's basement in a year cutting mats and figuring out these transitions and stuff like i gotta do this in like three weeks yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's completely different right. you know right. and and so and then just the pressure and all that stuff and right. so like you know that is as the the years and the days roll on i realize like that's what separates the artists from somebody that just had a good moment right or just the one wonder photo. you know yeah. Yeah. right that's like, the thing it's, it's all about consistency especially in our work it's like kind of like anyone can take a good photo but not everyone can take you know the 15 great photos for every job that they do yeah. you know or, or cool. take a great photo with like 30 people sitting beside you going Gosh, like, hey man, yeah, the clock yeah. is ticking, yeah, yeah, yeah. all this money on the line, let's have yeah. a combo. Well, it's like, what I love about know? AI, that it's a tool that can, for example, I heard about this DP who uses, you know, Mid Journey to sort of like figure out his look. So he's prompting, 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 and then suddenly he goes like, okay, I'm liking this, this is what I want to, so instead of going, you know, it's, it's like a different level of searching for moods, you know, like obviously you want to get inspiration, whether it's like from a, a movie or whatever. I'm going to make those kind of look like that scene from Pulp Fiction or whatever. But this is more like a nuance. Okay, I'm going to, you know, prompt stuff until I go like, okay, I like this. And then they go to set, inform, with awesome. this, yeah. you know. Right. So that's how I feel about lines with it, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's easy to just like put it in and be like, oh, this is great. And I did it. But if you have like lines, I'll say like rework this line a few different ways. Sure. You know, or if it's like a little piece of dialogue. 
Exactly. And it's pretty yeah. cool, you know? Exactly. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't think about that. And it would be the same as if I got all of us in a room and said, like, Just talked about here's it. this yeah. line, like, like riff on this a little bit with me. So yeah. this is, a, is an amazing, tool. amazing tool. It's pleasure. a tool. But I still got to pick up the camera. Yeah, personally, exactly. what I'm looking for is, like, um, AI. Like, you know, we do pre this. We, we hire a sketch artist or we hire sometimes, like, an, we make animatics. But yeah. I think that's AI I'm really looking for in the future using as a tool to, you oh, yeah. know, reduce that gap yeah so maybe we c- yeah pray. we could do it ourselves i mean right. i don't know how good it will get but hopefully client will just not stop at previous right. previous but right. you know it will they will actually hire us to create something amazing and magical but no, no, dude if you had uh, yeah i hope they will get there and, like, you do, and speed up the process I exactly it, and i can just so, kind of put it together and then for us too to work a shot out i mean again you yeah. know you kind of pre but if you're able to kind of yeah. pre-work out a couple difficult yeah. shots i'm like oh that's that'll cut but not in like not in writing, not in like a right. squiggly line. It's yeah. actually yeah. you know like an image, or yeah. it could be a moving you know, short footages, whatever. But if we can actually prove this and have it share with clients, like you know that gap of oh, I don't know what you're thinking in your head. Yeah, I know you can do it, but hey, here is a preview of what I'm thinking. But it will only get better from yeah. I actually better had from that like now for for uh, for a coffee shoot that we're like they realized that one shot we were doing was not working. So I, I said like, how about we just, you know, not do one transition, but then just do two separate shots. And within like 10 minutes, I just prompted something in mid journey. And I said like, this is where we could go. And then suddenly they were like, ah, okay. Then you go. It. And then it was go. just a tool yeah. to help the client visualize, yeah. visualize it. Yeah. And, and then they were like, they were happy with it. And then we shot it and everything was cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean like it's, it's, that's what I mean. Like, it's not going to replace us because you need to have like the same as you, you yeah. said, like, what, what is creative? Like, right. is it just because it's different or weird or whatever? It's, it's kind of like, I don't remember who said that. It's like, is a triangular door creative? And because the, he has, <laughs> his whole shtick was that, um, you know, creative is if it solves a problem in a way that nobody has seen before. Uh-huh. And is a triangular <laughs> door really solving a problem because it's, it's hard to do. It's expensive to do. You cannot really fit through it. You know, it's like, I don't want to do the triangular doors. You know, right. I want to make something where I solve problems with shit that makes sense. <laughs> and, 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 and like what you're just saying, like everybody's back to film now. Yeah. Like the irony of that, you know, yeah. like all the kids, like, you know, look, I mean, the, the kids are the next generation. That's just how that works. Right. Like the irony that they are like into film and Polaroids and right. stuff, you yeah. know, it's like funny. Like who would have ever yeah. thought? Well, right? authenticity is huge you know yeah. now i think i think people are like we've been lied to our whole lives by advertising and they're like no we want to see the real thing <laughs> yeah. and hence why our behind the scenes is so huge yeah. they're like oh finished footage i've seen a thousand ads in my life yeah whatever but they're like that process is so cool like oh my god that's so fun i'm gonna swipe on that thing 50 million yeah. likes on tiktok like, later yeah, yeah you know? like the the whole like like film aesthetic i feel like i've seen like, a bunch of people like go back to interlaced Oh God! Because like they say, like oh yeah, that look is so cool, and we're gonna have that this video yeah. flicker. Some are good ideas, thingy. some are bad ideas. And I'll, I'll, yeah, <laughs> so exactly, me. that's the thing. Like I would go, like why would you, like you know how much time and, and effort we spent to like getting rid of this? The poor engineers that like came up with these amazing sensors. They're like, wait, down, and they're going that. Yeah. It's like, no, do not go back there. <laughs> the look of Betamax. Oh, it was so yeah. good. Yeah. No. Uh, interlacing with uh, this torture town. Yeah. Uh, HDV. Uh, there we go. Moray, uh, all that. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just being able to shoot screens. You yeah. Know? But no, but I think a lot of the, the, the reason for the film is, is that mystery. It's that is the change in the process and your relationship to the image that you're making. Right. I think more than anything, it's not about that. The final image not, might not be that different, but the fact that you're not seeing it all and that, that you're you're kind of leaving a little to chance awesome. out there, I think, is great. It's and that, I think, yeah, yeah. exactly. Awesome. And and then once you do that once, you're like, all right, maybe I don't need to see everything I'm doing as I'm doing, and maybe I just concentrate on doing. Yeah, you yeah, know, I mean, great like great like film directors, you know, that like read like tons of their books and stuff. And I forget who said it, but um, uh, one was talking about it's like I always look at the person. I don't look through the viewfinder. Right. I don't look at the right. monitor. I look at the person. Yeah, it's if yeah. they can get yeah. it there, if right. it's happening in real yeah. time in real yeah. life, I know it's going to yeah. read on the. the no, with, with Avidon, the camera. couple things I did with Avidon, yeah, yeah, same yeah, thing. He was the same way. Like, he yeah. was just like, yeah. he's like the person. My job is to get the person to do something interesting that I want them to do, 
it's not what it looks like through the camera like somebody his assistant was shooting the button you know like on yeah. it you know so, yeah, exactly. yeah yeah that's the yeah. performance you right know? and yeah no, no, it's, it's especially as the director thing you right? like like because i think food shots are interesting not only like if something is messy or whatever but like if if also the the performance of the person like that you know like like <laughs> like like eating something drinking something it has so much to do with the senses and bring like their their personal touch to it that when you like you you know like when you're shooting something and just you let it roll like 30 seconds longer and then that person just did something without knowing <laughs> yeah. the camera was shooting and you'll use that in the edit or like yeah turn you know turn the camera on yeah. when the person sitting yeah. there yeah uh-huh no i mean half the time you know you're like trying to nail the shot and you're just like there's no way this fuck this person is gonna get you know, the cut and you just keep it rolling you know yeah. and, then, yeah. and then you just like go talking. relax yeah yeah and then it's like okay like there it is and like kind of like uh, yeah like like do the burger and then they're like all like one two three and it looks all weird and then they just keep it rolling and just take another bite and suddenly it yeah. looks like and supernatural like, and whatever it is you know yeah, yeah. like yeah. but that's that's you know that's the metal gymnastics of it or that's what separates a good you know hand model right. or you know actor from you know somebody mm-hmm. else it's like they just naturally like can mm-hmm. can actually do it or naturally and unnaturally because something that is so it, it always drives me crazy that when it's naturally and like like on set then it looks weird in the camera so like the, like these uh, ad balls have to like contour yeah and like no like like Boring. put your yeah like put it more like this and then suddenly through the camera it looks good yeah, but like, and then and, and where they want to see the label, you know, right. it's like, yeah. hey, and man, that's how you know you're, you're working with yeah. good hand models because they know this whole thing. Right, it has to work from the right. camera. And yeah. Sometimes they want to cut budget. It's like, well, let's just take whenever whoever, and you go like, but no. you yeah. want someone who knows how hands work on stage. It can make or break your day. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, you can kind of get away with it, but it's like right. you're trying to do a lot, and somebody doesn't yeah. know what the hell they're doing. Like it's, yeah. it becomes a whole thing. Yeah, and you know, AI, AI, you know, all this stuff is cool, but you know, there's. We still live in nature, yeah. you know, and and I, you know, that lace thing, you know, I think when everybody was jumping on the couch in the reverse, it's a cool idea, but I had to do it. But then as I like just tested it with my phone a little bit, um, you know, I realized like to really get the effect, if you don't have like big rigs and you're ripping buddy like right. off the couch, everybody's got to exaggerate the move, mm-hmm. right? Because it just doesn't work just yeah. sitting down. It's not that cool, you know, and that's just gravity. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? So you, yeah. You can you can make up all the ideas and previses and and CGI and then you go to shoot it and you're just like physics. why doesn't it look like that? Yeah, and then you're like oh physics is still flying. You know? yeah. So there is there is that like he, human but also just like nature side to yeah. what we do. How something you, you don't live in cyber digital world. Exactly, you live in real world. I feel like that's going to be the real struggle as yeah. things like progress like yeah. into VR and stuff. Yeah, you know, right. people make stuff. They're going to be like oh, man, like we still got to yeah. make. Yeah, or like the typical like when you see a storyboard or whatever, like the re- like like coffee granules will be much smaller. The and scale, yeah, the scale yeah. I know. Like awful. it's so crazy. Off, yeah. Where you thought like, oh, I could like, uh, you know, like I could have this in the front and this in the back, and then you realize you don't have enough lights to depth you know, the field. Yeah, it's a thing. It's it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. an optical thing that we have to fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, that's what yeah. they they pay us. Yeah, to, yeah. you know, is to figure yeah. that shit out. Yeah. It's kind of or you get this horrible Photoshop comp to put together. And now even with AI, it's like basically an impossible shot to do actually in camera. But they're like, yeah, like that. And it's just like, well, that's an impossible yeah. shot. Like, well, how's your... The Sunny D thing I had, it was, an anim- it was one of my first jobs. It was an animatic. And it was awesome. It was such a good animatic. I was like, this is, this is great. It'll be easy. You know, yeah. Shoot this. It also, man, I is a 10-year-old trying to pour this gallon. Oh. So was, the whole thing was like easy to pour. Can cause a gr- gr- <laughs> barely get it out with his rotator cuff, his shoulder. Oh barely get it out of the thing. Then he's going to pour it, and he's got like two hand, and he can like barely do it. It's really heavy, uh-huh. you know, for the kid. Mm-hmm. And you just go and you go like, okay, I gotta start figuring <laughs> this out. But the damn animatic was just, yep. it's like, yeah, you know, like pour it, no problem. Yes, you show up and you what? go, oh fuck, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody, anybody yeah. like yeah. thought to ideas, mention ideas, it could be a two year old anyone, pulling anyone? out of yeah. a fridge that hot yeah. and might yeah. be kind of hard? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, 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 that's where testing comes in. Yeah. Well, yeah. testing or having that experience of the next shoot, you, yeah, yeah. you're gonna know, right? Yeah, like, and I think that, that that's again. why we just keep getting smarter every shoot we do. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like that much smarter. Also, like, like kids, it's funny because at a certain age, they don't understand that we're making a movie. So you'll ask them to do something, I'll do it once. And you, if you ask them to do it again, they look at you like, I just yeah. hit it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
That shoot, that shoot, I mean, this is just a little anecdotal story, but that shoot, the kid it comes up, you know, I, he, he comes back on, I'm like, man, the kid looks tired. I mean, this is a young kid, like, you should have more energy than me. Okay, like, do and takes, and, like, we go to set up for the next setup. I look over, and the kid's just, you know, mom's in the green room, kid's just by himself, you oh, know, waiting yeah. for the next take. Sure. He's just getting handfuls of M&M's. Oh. <laughs> he was, he's crashing, man. He was been on a sugar high all day. Oh, yeah. He was dipping into crafty the whole freaking day, you know? And I was like, get his mom out of here. <laughs> Right now, no more candy for sugar rush man. crash. Yeah, I was like, I know that I've seen that face a million times. You know, <laughs> no, what I, I had to shoot, and it was like, I because I had like learned already that you have to make it fun for the kids, and oh, we're gonna sure. have to like to make like 80 takes of something. To, like, so I, I tend to turn things into a game. So it was like eight kids, and the shot was like they have to run and jump in a puddle. And so I made it a race, gave him points, whatever. And like they were like, because every shot, everyone wanted to oh, yeah. you know get the best points and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the client comes to me and says, like, can we remove two kids because we feel it's too many. And I was like, they hated me. Those two kids. Oh, like, because you had to choose, right? Like, right, because no, 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 I mean, like, like they. Oh, the losing you know, team. Like, you too. Yeah. And, and then, like, like, we said that, okay, like, like, let's tell the, you know, the, the, the stylist that they have to change pants or whatever. Oh, there you go. So they, they went away. Um, and then we kept shooting, and then it was over, and then they were like, like with their we got a new pants, pants on, no. like, I got my new pants on, let's do this, and like, oh, oh it's over, and they, they, oh. one of them, he looked at me like, don't worry, you'll still oh. get paid, don't worry, yeah. Like 20 years later, and I was like, at your house, you'd be like, you remember that one You tricked us. <laughs> oh, no. no, but like, we had prices, like, like we ha had like some, you know, toys and magazines and yeah. whatever, like, yeah, little game. Yes. and so at the end, like, everybody, wins so we like gave out all the toys sure. and then he was fine again there you go but uh yeah kids are were tricky heartbroken. kids are yeah, tricky yeah. and yeah it's hard and they, they pull out your heart strings too if you yeah. break their heart yeah. Yeah. all right well i'm, I'm gonna start running this up i want to say i just want to get a little bit how you got into this oh yeah sure so um i remember like i was five year old five years old when when like i went to the cinema with my parents for the first time i went, went to watch oliver and company the disney film and after the film, I told my mom, like, I want to do that. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I, at five years old, I knew there were people making films. So I, I knew I wanted to create something, you know, that, so that early. you can put on a screen. And, and I didn't know what it was. Like, back in the days, obviously, I wanted to make Disney films. But, you know, <laughs> then, then I, like, I, I realized that, you know, taking a camera and shooting something was easier than to draw every frame. <laughs> But, um, and then I also like, I grew up in Venezuela. So like, I, I mean, like I grew up, my, I was raised by a German dad, a Venezuelan mom and American television. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, um, I, early on, I was fascinated by commercials just because I thought like, ah, it's so cool that like every shot is like slick and perfect and looks nice and has a certain aesthetics, uh, aesthetic to it. So like, I knew I wanted to end up like doing commercial stuff. Um, and then I, I, I came to Germany uh, for film school and like me and like everyone just like wanted to do film, film, film and me and a friend, we wanted to do commercials. So we knew early on that, you know, we wanted to get into cool. that and we became a directing duo. And um, he was a motion graphics artist, self-taught and he made all of these amazing things. And I was, we were sort of like life action meets, you know, animation vfx and we were these kids that were cheap and could <laughs> figure stuff out and we were always trying to you know raise the production value like how right. can we take make something out of nothing how can we hack the camera how can we like like influence the lenses how can we get the anamorphics or the aesthetic you know we were always trying to make things appear more expensive plus he had all this like animation knowledge so Early on, we were already doing like sex set extensions and stuff just to like make it nicer, make yeah. it bigger. And that's how we like got our first jobs. Like I think our first thing that we got in the uh, advertising agency uh, and in the, in the advertising world was they wanted to, it was something internal for an agency. And it was like 30, like a script with like 30 visual effects and whatever. So we just went somewhere with our DSLR cameras. We shot it, we, we edited it, we, we did everything. We were like a, a two man band. And as a thank you, they gave us like our first commercials. Cool. You know, so some of it was some motion, some of it <laughs> was like this things with the kids and 
uh, sock puppets. So we <laughs> we did all these things, and then at some point, my my buddy who was like, ah, yeah, I'm not liking this whole PPM thing. Like, I'd rather like stick to animation. And I, we already had done some food stuff, and and I loved how how geeky it is. And one of my favorite things when I was a kid was watching. Um, Alton Brown uh, goodies uh, on, uh, uh, on the Food Network. I loved that show, and I always like I loved how he was doing like this very modern type of food goodness, yeah. stuff. Like he would always put a camera inside of the fridge or a camera inside of the oven, and he, like he had like this perspectives that I was like, okay, this makes a food show fun, and he was right. very geeky about it and right. explaining things. So I liked that aspect. Like I liked, like I like I love food. I love cooking. Like I have no, you know, there's people who, you know, you give them, you know, an eggplant and a knife and go like, go. And they're like, what do I do with this? So I always felt comfortable, you know, even doing food styling myself or whatever. If I did a spec or whatnot. Yeah. So that's when I, I think it was like eight, eight years ago. I said like, I want to be the tabletop director. I, I want to do that. Cool. Fun. And how about choice, yeah. how about just a moment to the bow for the food stylist in our lives? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. food stylists that are amazing. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. No, it's very important. Like, yeah. It's really they're, they're so and the production designers yeah, and the prop yeah, stylists yeah, yeah, and, the, yeah. and the and the and the producer. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's such yeah. a collaborative art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, it's just again, it's like being a director is just kind of a kooky job, right? Mm-hmm. It's like 100%. it's a weird job. But like you just, you, there's it literally takes a village yeah. to be new stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's just no way, you yeah. know. And you can pull some stuff off by yourself, but that's like, I don't know. I just feel like the, the lone, like maybe the street photographer, uh-huh. right? There's a romance in it. But if you like the collaboration of like film right. and bigger budget things, it's yeah. just nothing better than, than for sure. together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do a lot of spec work where, like, me and, and my DP and my food stylist, like, my food stylist, he lives in Havrek, he would come to Berlin, crash on the couch, and just in the backyard, like, the three of us or four of us, we would just, like, do something. It's like, uh, I haven't done, like, I want to do ice cream in this or that way, and then uh, we would go, okay, we'll, we'll, you know, do a little storyboard, we'll get together and spend a weekend just, like, working on that, the four of us, you know, um, and just experiment. Um but yeah, then then you go to a shoot, and then there's a hundred people running around. Yeah, and that's a yeah. different. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's a beautiful medium, man. I mean, yeah. I you know, should wrap this up. I'm sure we got to get back to yeah other again. things. But, but um, no. yeah, it's just it's it's a it's a you know I, I consider it all filmmaking. You know, whether you're shooting food or commercial, mm-hmm. and you know, for me, it was always not do that other job, do do the creative job. Right. So you know. I never thought I was really going to like end up, end up in commercial, <laughs> but you know, the world gives you kind of mm-hmm. your path and then you start doing it. And then I started falling more in love with like the short form story. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like really get to do something special. Right. Um, and it's really a beautiful, beautiful thing. No, we're lucky. Yeah. We're lucky to get paid to do creative oh, yeah. things. I mean, like, like every day I'm just like, this is amazing every day that, you know, people pay us money to do like things a that we love doing and b be a creative person because there's so many people out in the world hate their jobs and they hate you know that yeah. like, oh, it's just a paycheck you know whatever but it's like we get the paycheck and to flex our creative muscles and i think like i'm so thankful that you know and i think people shouldn't lose track of that no matter where you are in your career that you know it's a privilege that they're hiring us to tell their story for them and i think it's mm-hmm. amazing you know yeah, very thankful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like we turn our hobbies into our careers. <laughs> I mean, it's stressful as, as hell, and yeah. and most of the times you don't know where the next job or paycheck is coming from. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun, and and I feel like like I I feel like I we need to protect our environment. You know, like like there's so many people that after some time they just see it as a job, right? And they forget to say thank you. They you know they forget to sort of like yeah protect the the spirit of like mm-hmm. we're having fun. Right, and it, and it is just a commercial. Nobody's gonna die. Right, if, we're not curing know, cancer. As you know, we're not curing, yeah. exactly. Nobody's yeah. gonna die if the splash doesn't <laughs> a flower or a this or a that. You know, and and just reminding people, and and I mean, like, there's at some point, and I, I don't know, it was with you guys, but I realized, oh, I'm in a position of power, so I, you know, like I have to be right. a person, right. part of the community, has to, yeah. you know, tell people or show people, uh, you know. 
right. well the next generation How too right work. like yeah, yeah. like we have like people pass things down to us and i think it's important for us to pass it down yeah. The next generation, or else how they're going to learn. Like that's the thing. So many people are like, "Oh, I don't want to share." With I'm like, "Well, yeah. then what do you, you know?" That's not how this works. Like yeah, we, right. we are part of a community, and we're just part of it for a period of time through our, our careers. And then there's going to be people that follow us. And yeah. I think certain stuff has to be passed down, and it's our responsibility yeah, as the experts in it. As the bigger we get, the more we should do that. You know. Yeah. And I think it hap- the opposite happens a lot of times. Yeah. Like, totally. but like I mean, like bo- both the creative part, like showing people how it's done, but also how it's done in the sense of say thank you, right. don't be a dick. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, yeah, who you are. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, uh, you know, it's it's just, I, it's one thing I've had a lot of gripes about, it was like apprenticeships. I mean, I, you know, I had people that were jerks like that to me, but then I also had a lot of people that would just be like, dude, just show up. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and I'd be like, dude, I'll get you coffee, I'll do whatever, just let me see how the sausage is made, right. you know? Mm-hmm. And then when I would see it, I'd be like, oh, you're not that brilliant. Like, yeah. I that. <laughs> no, but like I, but it, but but they were like, but people did that, like right. took that, right. that leap of faith, man. And it was, right. um, you know, I just, it would be impossible to know how to do some of this stuff or how the whole big machine works right. if a few of those people didn't just say like, mm-hmm. right. just be there, right. you know. And so I've always tried to build that into my DNA, where you no. know, I try to help mm-hmm. people, or and also like kids are looking for like. a apprenticeships or they want to like learn stuff you know so those will drive you a little crazy but like i feel like you owe it to people to just you know, kind of tell them how it is or like let, you know hear them out and i've learned that you will you will find out real quick the ones that are gonna have any legs in this mm-hmm. and who aren't because mm-hmm. the ones that aren't they'll they're a little bit i'm like okay put this together do this like i'll help you out like i'll get right. these people will do it can't get the boards, can't get the general idea, and then you don't hear from them, and you know, like takes over. And so that's how I think you kind of figure right. that out. But yeah, creating that space for people is. No, I feel like you have to be more excited about success than you fear the failure. You know, yeah. like I feel like constantly, like you just that's it's moving constantly. But like I feel like the ones that make it are the ones that their eyes on the success. They know they're going to fail along the way, and that's totally fine. And as yeah. part of it, I think the ones that don't make it are the ones that are so scared of failing. You know, like, oh, they if I do this try. thing and it doesn't work out, it's like, no, then you do another one and you do a different one the next day. And, you know, yeah. like, like failures are part of the process. They yeah. shouldn't be something you're scared of. It's like, no, you're going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no I, doubt about I, it. I was doing like, like the moving image with sound right. and music, it fucking works. <laughs> like, like, if just shoot some shit, like, right. you can yeah. put something together that'll be cool. You have right. so many tools yes, today. Yes, it's yes, insane, yes. Yeah. you know. And, and I mean, like, it's just what, being consistent, you know, it's like showing up, you know, right. being on time, you know, doing your work, you know, yeah. coming prepared, being reliable. You know, like, like, like don't, whatever, be, being don't be an means, asshole. Yeah. Like, like, you have to sit down and think about stuff, do your storyboard, do your this, do your that, like, even if it's using AI. Right. And, right. you know, do your previous, um, yeah. figure out if, like, the sound that you're, you know, think is going to work or the music, like, check it, like, do your work and then right. do it every day consistently over time and... That's a big part of the battle. Integrity battle. is everything because most people will hire you because they know they can trust you, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. it. And they just go, I, I, you know, I don't know about this dude, but I know if I hire this person, I will get my shit, and right. we'll get done, and my whole life doesn't get fucked. Yeah. And like, <laughs> there's a huge amount of right. shit in there that like it's trust, and right. so you could have all the contracts in the world, you can have all the money in the world, and if the trust isn't there, you know, yeah. you'll never you know, do anything great in this biz and people won't hire you, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, also, like, cool. Sorry. Okay. Should we wrap it up? <laughs> Any sorry. closing thoughts, anyone? Do you, you know? Oh, okay. Closing Any thoughts. Words of wisdom? What's that? Oh, keep shooting. Yeah. Keep shooting. Just man. keep shooting. Yeah. It's like Dorian. <laughs> <laughs> so I sort of call this podcast. <laughs> Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Yeah. Follow your curiosity, man. Just yeah. follow, follow that, your itch, yeah. you know, scratch the itch. And yeah, like I think curiosity and and staying humble, like like yeah. like if there's no tools, if there's no media, I mean like I remember that you know Kubrick and and uh, Hitchcock they hated anamorphic, we hate nine by sixteen. I think there's there's you know <laughs> there's maybe you Dude, know, we lost we a lot of real estate yeah. with nine yeah. by sixteen. I don't I don't, that's I, a little I don't hate nine sixteen. Yeah, like I hate nine sixteen <laughs> and sixteen nine exactly. at the same time. That's exactly. what I hate. You know. <laughs> But hey, I, I don't know, like things keep evolving. So you have to stay curious and right. play with the toys. And I, I think that's most of the fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other name of the podcast. We play with the toys. <laughs>
and <laughs> <laughs> okay let's right. wrap it up all right thanks guys right. thank, thank you man yeah. right. this is wonderful it. awesome right. bonjour uh merci 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 that's all I got People love us more than haters Trying to roll up on the lot And when we fly through the air I feel like I can't miss a shot Pull up, got them cravings Together we gon' make it Looking for a side of flavor Riding through with all my space